LSU baseball was in action this weekend. We'll let you know how they did against number two, Vanderbilt. And a tragic event also took place in New Orleans this weekend. We have more on the events that went down. And later, Cameron Stelly will be here to preview the gymnastics SEC tournament coming up this weekend. Don't go anywhere. The sports desk, right now. Hello and welcome to the Sports Desk. I'm Max Hawkins. And I'm Derek Kopp. Now, LSU baseball was in action this weekend at an SEC series against Vanderbilt. So let's start things off with the matchup. LSU baseball had a successful weekend series win against number two Vanderbilt. They began the series on Thursday with a 13-4 win, followed by a 3-2 win on, set on Friday. Tigers came very close to completing the sweep on Saturday. LSU led Vandy 7-6 heading into the top of the eighth inning until right fielder Jaron Kendall knocked a three-run home run over the left field wall. LSU came close to tying it up in the bottom of the ninth, but ended the game stranding two men on base. Although they were disappointed with the outcome of Saturday's game, LSU is still happy with their performance against Vanderbilt. It's a little bit tough to swallow. You're four outs from sweeping Vanderbilt. So yeah, it's obviously going to be a little bit tough on you, but I thought we played outstanding defense. I thought we hit the ball really well again, and there's nothing to hang your heads about, our heads about because I thought all three games we played extremely well. Now, LSU has a busy week this week. They'll begin on Tuesday at home against McNeese State, followed by another home matchup against Grambling on Wednesday, and then head to Missouri to continue SEC play against the Tigers this weekend. Now, as Max said, the LSU baseball team clinched this past series, this past weekend's series against Vanderbilt on Friday, thanks to a tremendous performance by sophomore pitcher Alex Lang. Now, I have more on the rebound that everyone saw coming. Friday night may not have started the way sophomore pitcher Alex Lang would have wanted, surrendering a home run to his first batter. But it's not how you start, and as coach Paul Maneri believes, it's how you finish that will be remembered. That's what I told Alex after the first inning. I said, you're going to do that. That's what you're going to do. Everybody thinks you're coming out. Everybody thinks you can't do it. You're going to shut these guys down, and you're going to go seven innings. Although he didn't go seven, Lang did shut them down, giving up just one run after that while collecting nine strikeouts in six and a third innings work. The win was the third on the season for the former freshman All-American and freshman pitcher of the year after dropping his last two. And coming off the losing streak, Lang was as confident as ever heading into Friday's game. I, I felt pretty locked in, in there, you know, I just felt like my normal self. Um, well, I don't know if I would say less comfortable or whatever, but... Uh... I felt pretty comfortable with most of my starts. And stuff. Lang also got some much needed help on offense and defense as the Tigers committed zero errors and never trailed after the first. As the Tigers get deeper and deeper into the season, postseason dreams begin to become reality. And although they have a long way to go, Lang is excited for what this win could do for the team in the final stretch. It's, it's a big morale booster, it's a big confidence booster. It's showing all these young guys that we can do it, and it's not just a bunch of talk that those other guys are saying. Like, this team is capable of going far and, and doing some damage in, in this thing. The Tigers, now 22-9 and nine on the season, will look to maintain this momentum heading into the last two months of the regular season as they pursue yet another trip to Omaha. For Tiger TV Sports, I'm Derek Cobb. Now Lang will return to the mound this weekend in his home state against Missouri. LSU alum Smiley Kaufman made his Masters debut this weekend in Augusta, and he did it with a bang. Over the first three days of the tournament, the biggest stage in golf wasn't too big for the 24-year-old. Over Kaufman's first three rounds, he was two under par and sitting in second place. But unfortunately, the Masters don't start until Sunday, and that's when Smiley's path to a green jacket started to unravel. Paired with reigning champion Jordan Spieth, Kaufman struggled on the greens in the big spotlight. He finished his final round with 9 over 81 and in a tie for 29th overall. Now, LSU softball dropped two heartbreaking losses this weekend at number 16, Kentucky. When the series opened on Saturday, Carly Hoover was on the mound for the Tigers. Hoover took a no-hitter into the seventh inning until the Wildcats got on the board and took a 1-0 lead. Now, the Tigers' bats remained dormant, and LSU suffered the shutout loss. LSU's offense continued to struggle on Sunday. They suffered a, a similar 3-0 defeat. Now, LSU has one more chance to get past Kentucky tonight during the series closer. First pitch will be at 6 p.m. in Tiger Park. Now, on a more somber note, memorials are up in New Orleans for former Saint defensive end Will Smith, who was shot and killed Saturday night. 
Smith was driving his wife was driving with his wife when his car was rear-ended in New Orleans Lower Garden District. Smith hit the vehicle in front of him, and the driver of that vehicle pulled a handgun out and shot him. Police have Cardell Hayes in custody and are charging him with second-degree murder. Smith was a member of the Saints 2009 team that brought the first Super Bowl title to New Orleans. We spoke with Smith's former teammate Deuce McAllister about the tragedy. Off the field is what I remember the most, and it was just trying to make a positive difference. And you know, whether it was here in Louisiana, up in New York, just giving kids the opportunity to know that someone did care for them and to know that they could make it to that next level. And you know, when you look at him, he wasn't the biggest, he wasn't the fastest or strongest, but he just did did it the right way, and he proved that you could make it. Flags throughout New Orleans will be at half staff in honor of Smith. Now, five LSU athletes came out of the NCAA's top ten in their events this Saturday in the track and field meet at the Bernie Moore Track Stadium. Among them were junior Jada Martin in the 200-meter dash, junior Tanishi Mutonga in the 100-meter dash, and sophomore Kimber Payne in the 400-meter hurdles. Senior Shut Ch Chase turned in two of the fastest hurdle times in the nation, while junior Morgan Schutz made the NCAA top five in the 800 meters. Now, as a whole, LSU had a Southeastern Conference sweep of titles in the 6th Annual Battle of the Bayou. Now, next weekend, LSU Track and Field will be traveling to the University of Texas in Austin to compete in the Texas Invitational. The regular season will end on April 30th at the LSU Invitational. The Gymnastics NCAA Tournament will begin this weekend in Fort Worth, Texas. So coming up after the break, Cameron Stelly will have everything you need to know as LSU prepares for the tournament. Good afternoon and welcome back. I'm Cameron Stelly. The LSU gymnastics team is headed to the NCAA semifinals this weekend after winning their fourth straight NCAA regional title in Athens, Georgia on April 2nd. The Tigers finished with a score of 1973 to win the title and qualify for the semis. Aside from winning the regional title, three athletes won individual titles at the regional. Sophomore Maya Hambrick won her sixth all-around title and tied for beam and floor. Junior Ashley Knatt tied the LSU single season record with her 10th floor title, and junior Sydney Ewing won her third vault title of the year. Following the regional meet, head coach Dee Dee Bro said, I am proud of the effort and tenacity of everyone tonight, and I know we are looking forward to the progress we can make between now and nationals. Today, we caught up with Ashley Knatt and Randy Wyrick and the coaches who are getting ready for this weekend's meet. Obviously, it just leaves you wanting a little bit more, and I think that uh, this year we have that kind of an opportunity to be able to um, get in there and just do exactly what we plan to do and to execute. Um, it's definitely going to be a place of comfort, um, a place that we know we can go and dominate, and um, being able to compete against teams that we've already competed against just gives us confidence knowing that we you know, have competed against them and you know, we, we've won and um, definitely is something to look forward to. Um, this group has done a very, very good job of remaining positive and uh, we ask them every week, let's just get a little bit better and the difference in winning and losing in this sport is about that much. And uh, they have um, prepared like we've asked them to prepare, they have conditioned, they have met with the nutritionists, they have done everything, we've used every resource that LSU has to offer. In LSU basketball news, we caught up with Keith Hornsby and asked the senior what he thinks about the Tigers program moving forward. Coming up after the break, NBA history will be made this week, and Derek and Max will be back with how far fans are going to be a part of it. Now, if you have $1,000 to spare, then you're in luck, because you will be able to witness NBA history. On Wednesday, Kobe Bryant will be playing his last game in Los Angeles. On sub of fans have been paying an average of $971 for a ticket in the Staples Center to see Bryant's 20-year career come to a close against the Jazz. And if you want to go to a different game, for the Grizzlies-Warriors game tickets on StubHub, they're going for $436 to see the Warriors possibly get win number 73. Warriors picked up win number 72 Sunday against the Spurs. This was the first time the Warriors defeated the Spurs in San Antonio since 1997. Now the Warriors, Warriors also tied the 96-97 Bulls for the most regular season wins in NBA history. Max, really, really quick between those two, you got to choose which one. You know what? I'm going with the Mamba. I don't have $1,000 to spend either way, though, so I'll be watching them on TV. I'm with you on that. I would definitely go with the Mamba either way. But, guys, unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for today. But you can uh, catch more highlights on Twitter and Instagram at TTV underscore sports. And we're always online at TigerTV.tv. 
Now I'm Derek Kopp. I'm Max Hawkins. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here next week.